Shalayan. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Sunday Mass with children. Today, we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Grace, are we close friends? Yes, we are. Yay, yay. But you know, it didn't just happen. We put in effort and we made time to be there for each other, like when I lost my pet, or the time we practiced super hard for the Christmas performance. During Lent, it is our chance to draw closer to God. Now, to have a close relationship with our Heavenly Father, we need to put in the effort and the time to read the Word of God, to pray, to give alms, and to sacrifice and practice self-control by fasting and abstinence. It's totally worth it. And today, we'll be exploring fasting and abstinence. But before that, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Lent. Please help us to be like Jesus in the desert, where we deny ourselves the nice things of this world, so that we can grow closer and closer to you. We want to let go of ourselves so that we can be purified and see even more clearly your great love for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Close our eyes and pray. We reflect on our church today. Two hundred years of faith was so. When our founding missionaries built the place we now call.
Thank you for sharing these wonderful artworks. If you would like to have your work shown next Sunday, simply share it with us on our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Do you like my painting? No. Come on, you can say the nice away. Sorry, Joy. Um, I'm just a bit hangry because I'm fasting. Sometimes I wonder, what's the point of fasting? If it's going to just make me uncomfortable and angry. Wait, Jerry, you're fasting? I'm sorry. I actually bought you guys some chocolates. Hi, Uncle Joel. Hey, Uncle Joel. Yes, I'm fasting today. And it's making me lose my patience easily. I was even a bit mean to Joy just now. By the way, your chocolates aren't helping. You know, I always bring you guys some chocolates every time I visit. Anyways, uh, I know how you feel, Jerry. I'm actually abstaining from chicken rice this Lent. Chicken rice? But that's your favourite thing in the whole wide world. How do you still seem so happy even though you've given up your favourite food? Do you know there's a song for Lent? It's a great way to remember what Lent is about. It goes like this. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we are meant to repent. Forty days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. This is Lent. This is Lent. We have a treat for you. We've sung the song as a round. Yes, it's tricky. See if you can sing along. Let's go! Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We are fasting, to and almsgiving. For the days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. For the days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. We are fasting, then almsgiving. We are fasting, and almsgiving. For the days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. For the days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. For the days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. This is Lent. This is Lent. I know fasting and abstinence can be hard, especially abstinence from things we love. But there's a purpose for it. What's the purpose? Well, when we indulge in worldly things to bring us happiness like chicken rice... Or video games... Or chocolates... We sometimes forget the real giver of joy, God Himself. So, when we give up things that we enjoy, we can turn our hearts to God, where we can find His true joy, through His unconditional love. That's true, I mean good food and video games make us happy for a little while. But nothing close to the kind of joy you get from Jesus. Wow, you guys are so smart. I think you guys taught me more than I taught you. I should get going now. Bye bye. Bye bye, Uncle, Uncle Joel. Joel. See you real soon. Yep. Do you know the difference between fasting and abstinence? Fasting is when you limit your food. For example, we can eat one full meal or two small meals a day, instead of eating three full ones. Remember that it's a good idea not to eat snacks in between meals, otherwise it's not fasting anymore. What about abstinence? Some people think fasting and abstinence are the same things. Ah, abstinence is when we hold ourselves back and give up eating something or doing something. It can be your favourite food or even posting things on TikTok. But more importantly, there are good reasons for fasting and abstaining during Lent. That's right, when we fast and abstain from things that we like and enjoy, we detach ourselves from needing these worldly pleasures. Then we can turn our focus on God, who is the giver of these wonderful things that we enjoy. This way, when we remind ourselves to not indulge, we'll remember to seek Him and depend on Him. St. John of the Cross said that when we learn to give up good things, we become less needy of them and we learn instead to rely on God. Because think about it, things on earth pass away, like there may be a time when I can't eat my favourite chocolate anymore, 
but God will always be there for me. This is all a part of our preparation for heaven. It says in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Wow, you know your Bible. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't. St. Nicholas Owen was born to a carpenter in Oxford, England in 1562. He learned the trade from his father and later joined the Jesuits. He was a creative and master builder. When the Catholic priests of England was persecuted, St. Nicholas Owen helped them by creating crafty hiding places in the many Catholic houses he visited. It was amazing because St. Nicholas Owen was a small man with a limp but he seemed to knock down walls and move big rocks all on his own. He would take the Eucharist before he started work in secret so that nobody knew where the hiding place was or how it worked. These priest holes saved many priests because the authorities just could not find the secret places. 
in 1606, he was arrested with three other Jesuits after he came out of his hiding hole. You see, he was hoping to distract the authorities, but it didn't work. St. Nicholas Owen was tortured so that he would be forced to reveal information about other priests. But he refused, calling out only to Jesus and to Mother Mary. He died from his injuries. St. Nicholas Owen's feast day is on the 22nd of March. March is about to start, so it's time to set up your altar table, take a moment to get these items, and see you in a while. Hey, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram or any social media with the hashtag Catholic Mass at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. A special word you'll hear in today's first reading is covenant. Have you ever exchanged things with a friend or made someone a promise? A covenant is a very serious type of promise in which two people or groups give themselves to each other for the rest of their lives. When your mom and dad got married, they made a covenant with each other. God loves us so much that he has made several covenants with us. He wants us to be with him forever. Where else have you heard this word at Mass? When Father prays over the wine, this is my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. With this new covenant, Jesus comes into our hearts to help us live and love properly. When we receive the body and blood of Jesus at Mass, we remember this covenant. How amazing God is to give himself to us like this. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. We offer up this Mass in loving memory of Aidan, our brave and faithful friend who has returned to the Lord this week and we pray for his family and friends in this difficult time. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about fasting and abstinence during Lent. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the second Sunday of Lent, 13 March 2022. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, my dear young friends, today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. And we will hear a very familiar story in the Gospel, the story of the Transfiguration. So as we prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us also acknowledge our sins and ask that God will also transfigure us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God enters into a covenant with Abraham, the man of faith. Taking Abraham outside, the Lord said, Look up to heaven and count the stars if you can. Such will be your descendants, he told him. Abraham put his faith in the Lord, who counted this as making him justified. I am the Lord, he said to him. Who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to make you heir to this land? My Lord, Abraham replied, how am I to know that I shall inherit it? He said to him, Get me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all of these, cut them in half, and put half on one side and half facing it on the other. But the birds he did not cut in half. Birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them off. Now, as the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep and terror seized him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, there appeared a smoking furnace and a firebrand that went between the halves. That day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham in these terms. To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my light and my help. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. 
seek his face. The Lord is my light and my help. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. The Lord is my light and my help. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm, and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes Christ to transfigure us. My brothers, be united in following my rule of life. Take as your models everybody who is already doing this, and study them as you used to study us. I have told you often, and I repeat it today with tears. There are many who are behaving as the enemies of the cross of Christ. They are destined to be lost. They make fools into their gods and are proudest of something they ought to think shameful. The things they think important are earthly things. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the Saviour. We are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will transfigure these wretched bodies of ours into copies of his glorious body. He will do that by the same power with which he can subdue the whole universe. So then, my brothers and dear friends, do not give way, but remain faithful in the Lord. I miss you very much, dear friends, and you are my joy and my crown. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. From the bright cloud, the Father's voice was heard. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly there were two men they're talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah, appearing in glory. And they were speaking of his passing, which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep, but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let's, let us make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. As he spoke, a cloud came and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence and, at the time, told no one what they had seen. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear young friends, today we have the very familiar story of the Transfiguration. You know, where Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. And then of course, he took with him his three friends, okay, Peter, James and John. And as, you know, the disciples started to fall asleep, we were told they were heavy with sleep, but they tried very hard to keep awake. Jesus was transfigured. His clothes became brilliant as lightning. And in another gospel passage, he says his clothes became as white and whiter than any earthly bleach could make it. So you imagine the whitest shirt that you have ever seen and Jesus' clothes was whiter than that. And what does this mean? This means that the disciples saw Jesus in all his glory. Now, don't forget that Jesus is also God. And the amazing thing was that two persons that have passed away long ago, we have Moses, okay, who represents the one who guided Israel, the Israelites out of Egypt, and we have Elijah, you know, the greatest of all the prophets. These two appeared to Jesus and they were talking to him. But the question is, we know about Jesus' transfiguration. I'm sure you have read about it in some of your you know, Bible story books and all. But what does it mean for us? Is it really only Jesus that can be transfigured? How about us? Do we have a chance? Of course. Maybe not in the way that happened to Jesus. I hope not, because if one day all your clothes suddenly become dazzling white, I think your daddy and mommy will become very nervous. But we will be transfigured in two ways. First way, I'm very sure you may notice that before the Mass, we dedicate this Eucharistic celebration to this little boy called Aidan, who passed away last week. And we pray for his family and his friends and those who miss him. That is one way that we are transfigured, that when our time on this earth is over, okay, Jesus will come and bring us to be with him. And if we are with Jesus, and after we have been purified of all our sins, we will be like Jesus. Our clothes, because of our purity, will be dazzling white, brilliant white, like lightning, whiter than anything that we have seen. Because like I mentioned, we are all purified of our sins, and now we are ready for heaven, you know. But there is also another example that when we pray, when we are sorry for our sins, we ask Jesus to forgive us. Or for those of us who are already old enough and we go for the sacrament of reconciliation or we go for confession, we ask Jesus to forgive us, especially in the sacrament, you know, through the actions of the priest. The priest is the person that represents Jesus. And when the priest forgives you, he says, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We may not be able to see it, but at that moment, because you know, when we are sorry for our sins and we are forgiven, our soul is fully cleansed of all the sins that we have. And at that moment, we are also transfigured in a special way you know we become very much like jesus because we have no more sin at that moment now, of course some of us after that immediately we become naughty then of course we sin again but most of the time we try to be as holy as we can we try to be as nice as good as we can and that is the moment that we are also transfigured so my dear brothers and sisters Today we are reminded of this story of the transfiguration. And sometimes we think that it only happens to Jesus. Then how about us? We can be just like the saints. And also let's remember today in the second reading also, very important. St. Paul tells us through this letter to the Philippians, he says, Our homeland is in heaven 
And from heaven comes the Saviour we are waiting for, Lord Jesus Christ. All the good things that we do now, to try to be the best that we can, is to prepare us to go to our homeland that is in heaven. And I always like to imagine, and I, like, and I believe actually, that when we go to heaven, all our friends, our families, will also come to welcome us because it is a very happy occasion and you see all of us in our transfigured form and then that is where we will spend eternity in, with love, with joy, with Jesus, with Mother Mary and all the other saints that we have come to love so much. So let us continue to be faithful. Let us try our best to be good boys and good girls but those of us who have you know fallen in the sense is that we have done naughty things you know sometimes we do naughty things important to apologize huh? if you have done naughty things at home then to apologize to mommy and daddy to maybe to our siblings and those of us who are old enough and we have already received our first sacrament of reconciliation or our first confession then it's to go often, ask mommy and daddy to bring you for confession often and encourage the whole family to go together. Sometimes it's very nice when I, you know, minister this sacrament to the whole family. You see mommy, daddy, then you see koko, che che, you know, three, four persons all together as a family. So beautiful that as they reconcile together, they also want to be reconciled to Jesus. So that is also when our bodies our souls will be transfigured. And so today we pray that as we celebrate this transfiguration, we pray for ourselves. We may also become more and more like Jesus. So we shall have our profession of faith now. One God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord of mercy and compassion, help us as we enter more deeply into the Paschal mystery to reflect on the glorification which occurs not only at the end of Jesus' resurrection, but in the very midst of his suffering. Assured of God's ultimate victory over sin and death, and his intervention in our suffering, we stand before him now with our knees. The response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Goh, all priests and clergy, we pray that they may seek your counsel daily, seeking your wisdom and guidance in all that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for active participation and the grace of openness towards one another so that the synodal process, as indicated by Pope Francis, may renew our commitment to walk with one another towards the vision of God for His Church in Singapore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, we pray that God's radiant light may shine upon them as they make just decisions and use their powers wisely, preserving the peace and dignity of the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For church, we pray that this season of Lent might be a time for deeper conversation for our parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For victims of war and unrest, especially in Ukraine and Russia and throughout the world, we pray for non-violence and peaceful resolutions of conflicts. And may your love and peace come true and have victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, from the clouds you reveal Jesus in glory as your beloved Son. We trust that you will always give us what we need. Enlighten us with the bright glory of your presence and inspire us with your word. Keep us true to you so that we may be transformed into the image of our risen Lord. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we are clean. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to his setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, a spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. 
in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is Yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as you await the blessed hope when the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So my dear brothers and sisters, although you're not able to come for Mass today and you're watching this broadcast at home, I just invite you to unite your heart with Jesus and also continue to pray that He will transfigure us to be more and more like Him 
Now we can take the prayer of spiritual communion. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all things and I desire to receive You into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive You sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace You as if You were already there and unite myself wholly to You. Never permit me to be separated from You. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.